is ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there, good to have you join us. Well, we do apologize for being off air uh, all the while. Welcome to Core TV Primetime News. I am Geft or Gete in our major story. Borneo monarch Abubakar Ibn Gabai expresses shock at increasing attacks by Boko Haram in communities in the state. Also in this program, the Bring Back a Girls movement raises concern on the possibility of abducted Chiba girls marking 100 days in captivity. Labour Party governorship candidate in Oshun State, Fatai Akimbade, denies plans to step down from the forthcoming election. And outside Nigeria, Malaysia alleges compromised evidence at crash site of its passenger airliner in Ukraine. It's good to have you join us again. Now details of the headlines and other stories. The Shewa Bonu Abubakar Ibn Gabai has expressed shock at the increasing attacks by Boko Haram sex members in communities in the state. Gabai made his feelings known while receiving opinion and political leaders from Dambwa, headquarters of Dambwa Local Government Council of the State and his palace in Maidugri. He says he was saddened by reports of the latest attack in the town. Gabai condoled with residents of Dambwa over the attack and urged them to consider the incident as an act of God. He promised to channel the community's request for increased military presence to Governor Kashim Shatima. Earlier, the leader of the delegation, Kwame Dambwa, says the visit was aimed at seeking the assistance of the royal father towards ending the attacks. He says the recent attack had completely destroyed public and private buildings in the town and lamented that the attack took several hours due to the absence of security agents. Dambo appealed to the monarch to use his influence to ensure the development of troops to the area to prevent future attacks by the insurgents. The Bring Back Our Girls movement is concerned about the possibility of marking 100 days of the abducted Chibok girls in captivity. Members of the group showed their concerns as they continued their daily sit-out protest in Abuja. The report. It's now more than 80 days since these protesters began their daily sit-out protest. It is also the 95th day the Chibok girls have spent in captivity. Many of these people are prepared to continue to converge here until the girls are rescued. The protest group is now counting down to 100 days even though they hope the Chibok girls will be back before then. It's um, very unfortunate that today is the 95th day and um, we are praying and hoping that by the grace of God today will be our last sitting day so that these girls can be back even tonight so that we can celebrate and stop sitting. However, um, there's been a lot of um, unnecessary commentaries, victories and stories, a lot of lies, a lot of blackmail, a lot of name calling um, since the visit of Malala. The, uh, Malala came and sh she came to empathize with um, the families of um, the missing girls and also to help echo um, the need for their return. Some of the regular participants at the daily sit-out are still concerned that government officials have not stopped derading the group. Fatima Brass is one of the members from Borno State. I'm here because I'm a citizen of Nigeria. These children are our children. And in fact, I'm from Borno State. So, and it's not even because I'm from Borno or from Chibok. 
it can be anybody's child, it can be our children, it can be my children, it can be your child. What I expected from my president is when this incident happened, he should have visited Chibok. If for any security reason he couldn't visit Chibok, he could have gone to Meidukri. The insurgency has been going on for years in Borno State. There was never a time the president visited. And coming at a time that Nigeria's image laundering deal with an American PR outfit was leaked, the group is concerned about what it described as unnecessary blackmail of its members. It, however, insists that it will not be deterred from pressing on with its demand for the safe return of the abducted girls. The Labour Party governorship candidate in the Oshun August 9 election, Fatai Akimbade, has reacted to rumors circulating that he plans to step down from the forthcoming election. Akimbade told our correspondent, Franco Malape, why he left the PDP to contest on the platform of the Labour Party, adding that he is still very much in the race. Talking tough on the coming election in the state, Akimbade says this is his fourth attempt at contesting elections having been part of four different administrations in the state. He explains why he is contesting on the Labour Party platform. I left PDP for me to be able to have a platform. Because I'm not just coming out like I told you now. I'm like an household name. And so many people have seen an alternative because people have been looking out for how do we get up, get up of people here? Yeah. Incumbent is there, people are already fed up. And uh, the PDP too, the impose, the, the, the candidate that everybody saw as the, the, the party, I mean, the, the, the choice of some power that be in the party. So people are saying, look, oh, is this the way this, uh, the time, but my coming out has given everybody in the state a, a relief that yes, we now have a choice. He debunked rumors of his plans to step down from the governorship race and declared his confidence of winning the August election. Oshun state people are highly intelligent and they are very, I mean, <laughs> you can't play with people of Oshun because they know what they want. So I am very, very confident that uh, definitely I'm going to win the governorship uh, election come just precisely mathematically. When prompted and what he would do differently from past governments, Akimbadi says his plans to industrialize the state distinguish him from the park. There were two major programs I want to embark on. One, agriculture. What to go back to the train board and see that agriculture is giving the top priority. We already have what we call a free trade zone in Russia. That is where industries are to be, I mean, where to be cited. And that will help us to industrialize the state. Meanwhile, the build up to the election is on the rise. Frank on Malape. Or TV news or Shubu. In pursuance of the resolve of his government to provide qualitative education in Oshun State, Governor Ralph Arabeshala has launched the Omulwabi Scholar Buses. This is a school shuttle scheme to convey pupils from school to from home to school and vice versa. While commissioning the first phase of the scheme with 28 buses at the Mandela Freedom Park in Oshubu. Rebeshala says the scheme is to make education accessible to pupils. This, he says, is in addition to complementing various giant strides the government has made in the education sector. The deputy governor, who also doubles as the commissioner for education, Titila Tomori, admonished users to make good use of the buses. To provide buses like these to convey public students to their middle schools, deputy they governor. contempt us. I'm happy that today we are putting to shame the condemnation of our declassification program. Supply students and not those that are connected with the use and running of the buses, so please use them well. Remember, 
and always see these buses as legacy bequeathed to you. School heads and pupils could not hide their joy as they commended the scheme and promised to provide the necessary support for the Arab Special Administration. Being back out or being tired before getting to school is no more. And I want to tell the student, no late coming again. Abi? In view of this, it is the desire of every student in the state of Ashun that Ogbeni Rahuf Adesuati Arab Shola should be allowed and supported to be our governor for another four years. The buses, which will be distributed across the state, will charge students 14 hour to and from their various schools, irrespective of distance. Oshun Command of Nigeria Customs Service has repositioned its security network within the border lines to prevent smuggling of prohibited goods into the country through the region. This follows the recent uncovering of a new trend of smuggling contraband items concealed with veterinary chemical products into the country. The Customs Area Controller of the Command, Terry Richard, warned smugglers to desist from illegal border treats to enhance sanity in the economic environment explained that custom officers from his command while on patrol intercepted two trucks loaded with rice and concealed with veterinary chemical product. The effort was thwarted by officers who carried out the thorough search and eventually discovered that they were conveying prohibited goods. He revealed that the Comptroller General of Customs, Abdullahi Diko, has equipped the service with necessary logistics to enhance operational efficiency. You're watching Core TV Prime Time News. We take a break. We'll be back shortly. Stay with us. Core TV News now provides a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electioneering campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliament from the national, state, and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 01453-3407 at 24 hour news station you can now watch core tv news live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com click on live tv on our website and watch us live Hello and welcome to core tv primetime news to follow us on twitter click on twitter icon on our website and facebook click on the facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24 hour news station. Nigerians continue to Night, the city of Lagos. Be the first to know. Core TV News from the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. Our federal high we course. break the news. We are one Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news spreads. We are Core TV News. Welcome to Core TV. Twenty four hour news station. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. I see you as weak, and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Welcome back. It's Core TV Primetime News. Exporters in Nigeria's second largest cocoa producing area, Cross River State, have resumed shipment after government suspended a levy on bean exports. About 500 tons of cocoa due for export were stocked in warehouses for over a week as exporters protest the state's failure to adhere to a court ruling to repel the task. 
the tax. Cocoa farmers say they had paid around 300 million naira last year to the state government in Levis. The government is to meet with exporters next Tuesday as part of reconciling their differences. Cross River is aiming to maximize revenue earnings through seaport and compete with more established ones, especially in Lagos, a nation's commercial capital. Nigeria typically produces around 250,000 tons of cocoa every year, official figure for the 2013-2014 cocoa output have, however, not been released. IMF boss Christian Lagrage has warned that financial markets may be a little a bit given the, pers uh, the persistently high levels of unemployment and debt in European economies. She ordered that continuing low inflation could deter undermine growth prospects in the region as the European economy was recovering. She advised that interest rates should stay low until demands pick up. The European Central Bank had last month cut its main interest rate to 0.15. It also cut its deposit rate, which it pays banks to keep money on deposit, to 0.1. This makes it the first major central bank to introduce negative rates. Inflation in the Eurozone is currently at 0.5. Forbes Media has sold a majority stake in the company to a Hong Kong-based group of international investors. After 97 years of family ownership, Forbes Media, which includes Forbes magazine, was sold to Integrated Will Media Investment for 475 million US dollars. However, the Forbes family still retains a significant stake. Steve Forbes will also remain as chairman an editor-in-chief, which says it reaches 75 million people worldwide every month through its print, digital TV, conference and research ventures, began looking for a buyer last November. It will continue to be headquartered in the U.S., but announced plans for an international expansion. Malaysia has issued an impassionate plea for the MH17 disaster site in Ukraine to be protected from tempering. It says evidence was being compromised in which, in what it called a betrayal of the lives of that were lost. Concerns are mounting over the integrity of the crash zone in rebel-held eastern Ukraine with the government in Kiev accusing Moscow of helping poor Russian separatists and sergeants destroy evidence. Transport Minister Leo Tiong Lai says Malaysia is deeply concerned that the crash site has not been properly secured. Ukraine says the rebels shot down the Malaysian airline uh, plane Thursday, killing about 298 on board. That prevent us from learning the truth about what happened to MH17 cannot be tolerated. Failure to stop such interference would be a betrayal of the lives that we lost. The world has a moral obligation to ensure that the remains of all victims are recovered and treated with respect. We will play our part in fulfilling this obligation. That is why, later today, I will join the Malaysian team in Kiev. MH17's flight path was a busy major airways like a highway in the sky. It followed a route which was set out by the International Aviation Authorities, approved by Eurocontrol, and used by hundreds of other aircraft. The flight and its operators followed the rules, but on the ground, the rules of war were broken in an, uh, in an uh, unacceptable act of aggression. It appears that MH17 was shot down its passengers and crew killed by a missile. This outrage cannot go unpunished. Once again, Malaysia condemned this brutal act of aggression and called for those responsible to be found and to face the full force of justice without delay. 
French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius has called for an urgent truce in Gaza and renewed support for the Egyptian initiative accepted by Israel but supported by its Hamas foes. Fabius issued the call at a Cairo press conference after talks with Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, who is rallying international support for Cairo ceasefire proposal while isolating Hamas. The government of Sisi, a former army chief elected after Austin, an Islamist president last year, has accused the Palestinian Islamist movement, Hamas, which runs Gaza, of supporting militants of its own territory and has backed and has given into the ceasefire demands. Fabio stressed in portals of Israeli Gaza ceasefire as an urgent imperative as the death toll mounted to 323 Palestinian and three Israelis in the Gaza conflict which Israeli military launched with the declared aim of halting cross-border rocket fire by Hamas militants. Absolutely, priority is a ceasefire, but it must guarantee a lasting truce that addresses the security needs of Israel and the material assets issue of the Palestinians. I repeat, it is imperatively essential to support the proposed ceasefire. Fabius reiterated the French government fooling back in Egypt's proposal. The truce plan, which Egypt had proposed to take effect last Tuesday, calls for a ceasefire following indirect negotiations between Israel and Hamas. Hamas, however, insists on negotiating key demands, such as guaranteed to leave the blockade on Gaza's border crossing before it halts as rocket fire. This fire is between Israel and Hamas. That's all Israel has accepted it. Hamas has not. So what has to happen now is what Hamas moves in the right direction. The strongest typhoon to hit southern China is more than 40 years made its second landfall weekend. Though it is made this known after leaving a trial of destruction and at least 77 dead in the neighboring Philippines. Super Typhoon Ramasun hit the city of Zhangjiang in South China's Guangdong province. It first made landfall on Hainan Island, packing winds of up to 216 kilometers an hour. Typhoon was expected to bring torrential rains and was the strongest storm to strike the country's southern region since 1973. It claimed its first victim in China soon after coming ashore in Wenchan when a man killed by debris as his house collapsed. State-run China Central Television in news bulletins showed images of wind-whipped trees and high now and high waves churned up by the typhoon. A public security official in Wenxian, a city of Hainan, where the storm made landfall, says authorities anticipate a rise in fertilities as dozens of residents had already reported injuries before the power was cut off. The outer bands of the storm latched Hong Kong overnight with heavy rain and strong winds, but the city was spared a direct hit as the typhoon tracked west towards Hainan. Earlier, Ramasun, a sign word for Thunder God, hit the Philippines, slamming the capital of Manila and killing at least 64 people, with 103 others injured and five still missing, according to the country's National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council. Ramasun was the first typhoon to make landfall since this year's rainy season began in June, as of the first major storm since Super Typhoon Haiyan devastated the eastern islands of Samar and late last November. In China, the typhoons come after dozens of people died in the past week when heavy rain battered swathes of countries with at least six killed by lightning, thousands of homes destroyed and more than 300,000 evacuated. And with that, we wrap up the show for tonight. On behalf of the entire news crew, I am Gift of Getter wishing you a very good night. Rest. Good night.